Hello friends, yesterday in Mumbai saw a sort of revival of Legends Club at the Cricket Club of India, South Mumbai. Legends Club was a practice that was started by the late Raj Singh Dungarpur, former president of Board of Control, Control for Cricket India, former chairman of selectors and himself a former Ranji Trophy captain for Rajasthan. So, Raj Singh Dungarpur started this Legends Club to celebrate the uh, achievements, to celebrate the life, to celebrate the greatness of the some of th three of the greatest Indian cricketers. It coincided with the birth anniversaries of the three V's of Indian cricket, Vinu Mankad, Vijay Hazare and Vijay Merchant. The Legend, Legends Club was started along the line, like, lines of the Legends Club in England which was to commemorate the birth anniversary of the late Jack Hobbs. So it was a practice where cricket lovers came together, discussed cricket, spoke cricket and it was a good gathering. So Legends Club yesterday was a sort of revival to mark the birth anniversary anniversaries of Vijay Hazare and Vinu Mankad. Vijay Hazare's birth anniversary falls on March 11th and Vinu Mankad's on 12th April. Though yesterday was not any of their birthdays, it was a step in the direction to revive Legends Club. So it was a sort of small function where former Mumbai captain, opening batsman Shishir Hatangadi and former India fast bowler Raju Kulkarni who recently chaired the Mumbai selection committee and guided Mumbai, Ranji, uh, Mumbai team to its 42nd Ranji Trophy title. So this is the start or the restart of the Legends Club and it is expected that this will go on in the days and months to come. The Legends Club took a break because of the COVID pandemic four years ago and there were steps, discussions within the committee at the cricket committee of uh, CCI to revive this and yesterday was the first step in its revival. So let us hear more from G. Vishwanath who is actively involved with Legends Club right from its inception more than 20 years ago. He was closely associated with Raj Singh Dungarpur and also the late Madhavapte, former India Test batsman and who was closely associated with the Cricket Club of India and its cricketing activities. No, needless to say, G. Vishwanath retired from the Hindu as its cricket correspondent, widely travelled cricket journalist and also keeping himself active even today post his retirement covering cricket, travelling the country and even overseas. So let's hear from G. Vishwanath, followed by anecdotes and stories from Shishir Hatangadi and Raju Kulkarni. It's interesting to listen to them because Cricket Club of India, the cricketers, it's, it's, it's common discussion is cricket. And there are some fantastic stories to hear from the cricketers whenever they get together. So as I mentioned earlier, Legends Club was to s celebrate the lives and contribution of the three V's of Indian cricket. Later on, it also inducted the legendary badminton player Nandu Natekar and also the legends in the later generation of Indian cricket, the 1983 World Cup winning captain, India's greatest all-rounder and also one of the greatest in the world, Kapil Dev, little master Sunil Gavaskar, champion batsman, the first to the 10,000 run test uh, 10,000 run club in test cricket and also the man who scored a century of centuries, Sachin Tendulkar. In the past, there have been events, functions coinciding with the birthdays of these legendary sports persons. But uh, due to COVID, it had to come to a standstill and yesterday was a sort of revival. Let's hear more from G. Vishwanath, followed by interesting anecdotes stories from Shishir Hatagandi and Raju Kulkarni of 
विजय हजारे एंड विनू मंकट मोर एनेक्डोट्स फ्रॉम शिशिर हंकर हटंगड़ी इन यू फर्स्ट ऑफ़ ऑल आई शुड थैंक द सीसीए प्रेसिडेंट एंड माय डियर फ्रेंड सचिन बजाज एंड आल्सो द कमिटी टू गेट दिस गोइंग एक्चुअली यू नो द लेजेंड्स क्लब एज यू सेड यू नो इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ़ सॉफ्ट लॉन्च रिवाइविंग इट टू कीप द स्पिरिट गोइंग द मोमेंटम एक गेट गोइंग दिस में भी मोर देन टू डेकेड्स गो राजन स्टार्टेड ग्रेट सोल लाइक माधव अपते आई रोट अ लेटर टू टू संजू कटारे इट्स मैसिव इमोशनल अटैचमेंट यू नो बिकॉज़ ऑफ Raj Singh founded this Vijay Club with the president for for a long time and also Maro Akte. And suddenly, you know, because of the pandemic, everything came to a standstill. And uh, and hence the reason I thought you know two institutions should be involved in this. And CCI has been fantastic. I think 2001 too. It's about got off a century actually. You know, except for the last three and a half years, we have not had anything. Uh, so thank you so much for. It is going. Hope you continue to support. Let there be any cricket committee. Yes. The same. Thank you so much. It also on the cricket committee. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, it's an honor, honor to be speaking today about uh, two gentlemen who actually were the foundations of Indian cricket in the 40s. Uh, Mr. Vinu Mankar, as they called him, Master, I think, in the Bodo days, and uh, Captain Vijay Hazare, another master in his time. Uh, from the little, I never met you know Mankar. Frankly, I met him once, but I've been very close to the family. Uh, Ashok was our first captain. I think Raju's first captain, my first captain, and uh, we got a lot of inputs from Ashok and Rahul Mankar, the late uh, brothers who passed away sadly, uh, on their father. And uh, very interestingly. The stories I've heard about Vinu Mankar and Vijay Hazare from the Vijay Hazare family again, because I was in Baroda for three years as CEO, so my inquisitiveness more was more towards the history of uh, Vijay Hazare's family than uh, current uh, Ranji Trophy cricket. But uh, the input from them and uh, the synergy of both their lives are very interesting. Both, and that is where I think our discussion is going to eventually go. Uh, they are products of uh, royalty. Uh, the princely states in those days were the IPL franchises of today. Uh, they looked after good cricketers because cricket was a medium uh, in terms of diplomacy, in terms of getting close to the British Raj. And cricket, polo, and hunting were three sports that uh, actually helped bridge the gap. So whenever there was a talented cricketer, uh, they would become house guests of. The royal family, uh, be it uh, Captain Vijay Hazare, Vinu Bai, Subhash Gupte. I mean, there's so many cricketers that actually lived in the royal families for years. They played for their states. They actually were looked after by the states, much like IPL franchises today. And uh, Vinu Bai's story is pretty, if I may say, very filmy. It started in the princely state of Nawadhar. And uh, obviously, you know, his father had remarried, and uh, we know the young Mulwantarai Himmatlal Mankar would spend time outside his house, not at home, and he would be bowling in a graveyard. And this is a story that is actually told to me by Rahul Mankar, uh, my our dear friend, and he said that he would be bowling at the graveyard, and one day, Dilip Singhji passed by in his car. And he saw this young talent bowling, and he was bowling medium pace. He stopped the car. And it's, I mean, imagine a film being made on this. And he told his orderly or ADC, "Get this boy over." We know Mankar that time was he put him under a coach called Albert Wesley. Albert Wesley played captain. He was a Britisher. He captained Nawanagar in the good old days. Those days it wasn't Saurashtra or Jamnagar; it was called the princely state of Nawanagar. And from there on, Wellesley was the gentleman who told Venu Mankar to become a spinner. So these are defining moments in cricketing lives that actually change a person's career. It is like much like the IPL; some unknown guy is seen by the talent scouts, picked up, and he becomes a star overnight. Venu Mankar's journey began from then, from there on, you know, to to become. Such a huge name in Indian cricket. I mean, 
when you talk to elders and you talk about Venu Mankat, there is a sense of respect, a sense of uh, admiration for the journey he took. And he was, he was a rags to riches story. And there are some things that about Venu Mankat that I have heard over the years which are quite baffling. One is like Vilas Godbali, he was a big rasik of music. He would go and sit in a corner listening to Bhimsenji or Gandharva in music concerts. And he knew ragas, he knew Hindustani classical music. And I think the friendship, the brother-sister relationship with Lata Didi also came from that. Uh, she would tie him a rakhi. Introduced by Dilip Sardesai's brother, Sopan Sardesai. Sopan, I, I don't know, a lot of you would know Sopan by, but uh, he was the one who introduced them and then the trio of Vijay Manjrekar, Raj Singh and uh, Vinu Mankar would be frequent visitors at the Mangeshkar home. I think they live uh, in Tardev near Bhajigali, what we call Bhaji Shastri Gaon. Gaon, not Gaon Devi, this side. Anyway, uh, so Vinu Bhai lived in Panhalal Terrace, which was just across the bridge. Panhalal Terrace. So he had a Kholi there where the family grew up and that is where I think the, the whole story of the, the association and friendship of cricket and music started. And of course, Didi was a big fan of Vilubai's like we all are, but uh, Raj Singh tells me a great story about Vilubai. He says, uh, when he came to Bombay, he would come here to CCI and be ready and all the royal princes would come and practice at 7 o'clock, bowl, and uh, he would be sitting there fresh to bowl for three hours to the batsman. And Rajbhai said that we were always inquisitive. Who is this guy who bowls for three hours to all of us? And we have our tea and melba toast and then go and just bat and bowl. He realized that one Sunday morning he was walking on the marine drive and he saw a gentleman sleeping on that, on, on the marine drive. It was Vinu Mountain. From there the journey went up to Panalal Terrace to, to uh, marine drive. Uh, the Vinu Mankad Lane and uh, so on and so forth. But most importantly is to admire the journey that I think all of us we should be very proud of. You know, this is a self-made cricketer. A self-made cricketer who wore a dhoti at home, wore saddle row suits, being the highest paid professional in the late 40s and 50s at Haslingen. In fact, the great story of 1952 when he, India toured England before that great test match was that he was on contract with the uh, club and he was the highest paid. He drove a Rolls Royce, wore fancy suits, worked in the bar, never drank but made the best cocktails. Worked in the bar as a part-time uh, employee. But he asked for assurance from the BCCI that like, I want to be, I want to know if I'm going to play in the game. And the BCCI said no. So he missed out on the first test match. He didn't play the test match because Haslingen and that is what we will come to later, that you know, are we going into a stage of the IPL where the franchises will determine how a player goes in terms of fitness, in terms of his availability, considering they are the ones who look after the players. So, it's a good thing, but it's something to be discussed and it will probably have its own reasons for doing so. So, that's Vino Mankat's story. There's so many other stories that come up in terms of, you know, Ray Lindwall advising him in that 47 series in, in Australia against Bradman saying, reduce your back leg, he had scored very 0 and 5 in two test matches. And his opposition fast bowler said, reduce your back leg. He got 200 in that series. Yeah, he used to get out to Yorkers. That's right. Yes. I wasn't around, but this is what my stories go. And uh, of course, <laughs> but uh, he changed his back leg and uh, he got 200. Of course, after that, the famous 413 uh, opening partnership uh, with uh, Pankaj Roy. Uh, Again in the 50s where yeah, well. some of our current cricketers didn't even know that there was a record yeah. of 413. So, uh, great contribution, played for 9 states in the domestic cricket. 9 states, of course part of it was pre-independence. There was Nawanagar, there was Western India, there was, he's, he's played for Mysore, I think he's played for Rail, uh, Rajasthan. Rajasthan, Bengal. So, a true professional played only for money. I mean, there's a very interesting story of one Maharaja telling me that he come back from England and he lay cricket gear on his dining table. And Rahul Manka told me this once. He said that the who's who of Bombay would come and buy cricket gear from him. 
it was a clinical spat or shoes or whatever because those days you never got you know the best you could do if you were doing something in cricket was go to nakani sports just across the road beyond that you had no way to go so these were the things that made him a professional and uh, the uh, milan wale gave me a very good anecdote the other day he said that when bombay were playing hyderabad uh, in the late 70s and bombay were losing that ranji trophy game they take, lost the first innings and uh, apparently vinubhai told ashok the captain of bombay you may be a great captain but you don't have to do anything to win this match hyderabad will either win it for you jaisim the captain will either win it for you or lose it for you you just don't give shivalkar bowling give that leg spinner with a funny action bowling something to that effect it was rakesh tandon i mean and uh, he said jaisim will lose it for you if he attacks he will defeat you if he tries to defend he will lose it and bombay won that game you know it was the first game i think sandeep patel rahul mankar vijay mohan vijay mohan had made their debut so there are stories about his leadership qualities and of course his sense of humor his drive wit that we all know about but i think all of us who are romantics of the game need to thank him for uh, for his contribution to indian cricket because without him and vijay hazare a little bit about vijay hazare uh, i met him once or twice in my life uh, again we talk about his batting his the hundreds at adelaide against bradman both innings but nobody even talks about his 600 first class wickets you know and nobody even talks that vijay hazare was a master on coil batting 600 wickets in first class cricket uh, you know he walk into any team as a bowler itself but uh, another story which i heard at adelaide when india had lost a few wickets for nothing i think fatkar came to bat with him and uh, India were five down or four down for very little. England. England. Again, England. Kai Hoth night. Yeah, so I think Fatkar asked him Kai Hoth. <laughs> He said Kai Hoth night. <laughs> With five, four down for nothing for uh, Vijay Hazare to say Kai Hoth night. It just tells you about his mindset that nothing affected him. Two months bowling. Two months bowling. Yeah, and uh, again, a quality that we all look back and we should allow this as cricketers to be forgotten. because they are the people who sort of gave a different dimension <coughs> to indian cricket from time to time and uh, for me these two greats i mean the last i can remember is that talking to the family of vijay hazare about his discipline about his uprightness uh, if you saw him ever he was always with the scarf indian blazer upright gentleman and one incident stands up it, it was 1983 and i just started playing for Mumbai. We grew up in a tele- non-television era of radio, and interestingly, I was having lunch with Mr. Gavaskar at that. You know, in the Moti Bag Stadium, there used to be a Jamia na where lunch was served, and I think we had got the other team out, and it was about time we went out. So we went for early lunch because we said let's have an early lunch. We were eating there, and suddenly I realized Gavaskar put his plate down and caught up, and went and touched somebody's feet. It was in a blazer, not knowing how Vijay Azhar looked. After he came back, I asked him. I said, "Is he related to you?" So he said, "No, he's related to Patti. <laughs> he's Vijay Hazare." And that's when I realized that you know names can be as big, but growing up on radio, somehow don't identify faces because that's something. Uh, so like you know, I'll give you a small incident. 1985, I went with the CCI team to Australia, and we were playing in Adelaide. And I said, "Chalo yar, matha take ke aate Bradman ka ghar hai." So we went to Bradman's house, and uh, one of my colleagues saw Bradman watering the plants in shorts and a ganji. So he told me, "Bradman sa mali hai." I said, "Nay, Bradman." <laughs> so he saw us and he called us in because we were wearing the CCI blazer, and obviously CCI is known all over the world. That is the time he told us this. He said this game was about getting away from the war. It will come down to five hours and ten hours. This is 1985, because people would come out after the war to watch cricket. So we had 50,000 people in the stadium. That's not going now. He said eventually it will come down to people's time, valuing people's time, not the cricketers' time. Workload, etc. I'll give you a small anecdote, a little away from this. Raju and I were neighbors when we were playing for Bombay, and uh, we practiced with the Bombay team uh, the day before a test match. India were playing Australia at the one day. Uh, Allen Borders team and Raju and I practice on the side nets with the 
with the Bombay team and uh, we decided that next day was a test match so we got passes in the north stand we would come at 9.30 to watch the test match so we went home took that Kali Piri taxi went home <coughs> we had decided at 9 o'clock I will go to his house and we will go to the neighbours at 9 o'clock I was told he has already gone to the ground so I thought maybe you know he's gone because there is a net and they want a fast motor I entered the stadium cursing him saying that you know he let me down and I go up, I climb up the north stand and I see Raju bowling in a test match. <laughs> and I was like, what is he doing here? <laughs> and later I found out that obviously at night he got a call saying Chetan is unfit, Sharma, and uh, he needs to be at the ground at 9 o'clock or 8.30 to come and play a test match. Now that doesn't happen in today's day, but it